So what I want to cover off in this video is an overview of what Windows App Locker is all about. Now, in essence, App Locker is a facility built into Windows that allows you to whitelist applications, and that means that you can approve or deny the running of that. Now, what I've got here is a machine that is running Windows 10, but importantly, to do App Locker in standalone mode, it needs to be Windows 10 Enterprise. Now, you can use Windows 10 Professional with App Locker, but you would need to deploy the policy using something like Intune. So, for this example, we're going to use a standalone version, and the first thing that we do need is to have Windows 10 Enterprise. So, you'll see that I've got two users here a plain old user and an administrator. So, let me just log in as the standard user and just take a look and see what can be done. So no changes really have been made to this environment. Uh, it's just a standard out of the box Windows with uh, an additional local user added. Now, when we are able to log into this environment, you'll see that this local user will be able to uh, basically run anything. So let's go into uh, Windows Explorer here. Let's have a look uh, at their downloads. You'll see that I've got two files here. So if I try and run PuTTY, for example, exe file, you'll see that it successfully launches. Now, if I go into Firefox, you'll notice that uh, it's going to ask me to do uh, the elevation. The UAC is going to launch there. And again, that does mean that you'll see here actually that Firefox does go off and does start uh, installing. So not something we really want to have when users are clicking on random things that are being sent uh, from the internet. What we want to be able to do is we want to block this with a policy to prevent the user um, from being able to do uh, basically any of this. So let's just uh, get rid of that and let us log in now as the administrator and set up uh, App Locker. So we will log out of the local user. All right, and now we'll go back in and we'll sign in and we will set up uh, the App Locker environment. So we log in as the administrator. And once we've done that, we need to firstly go in and check that uh, a service is running. Now that service makes sure that all the policies are adhered to on the machines. So to find that uh, service, let's go into the uh, services area here, and we should find the service here called application identity. Now if we select that, we need to make sure that it is running. And we'll notice over here on the left that it says that uh, it is associated with App Locker. So that's what we need to ensure is running. If it's not, just right mouse click on it and you'll see that you can uh, start that service quickly and easily. Now with that service running, the next thing to do is to go in and set the local security policy. Uh, do a search for SecPol and then select that. You'll see that we get a number of options here now. We will find um, the App Locker under Application Control and you'll see that we have settings for executable, uh, installer, script and packaged options there. So the next option is right mouse click on the App Locker leaf there and select the properties. Go in and make sure that you have a check mark in each of these items and make sure that they are set to enforce. Now you'll notice that if you want, you can set it to audit only if you do want to see what's going on before enforcing it. But for this example, I'm going to make sure that it is checked to be configured and also enforced. Now with that set up, what we can do is basically go in here, right mouse click and create a new rule. Now a lot of people would think, well, I just want to deny certain files uh, first off the bat. So let me just show you what happens if we go in and set this to deny. So I've got a file in mind that I want to deny. So I'm going to go in and find that. Now that is in the C drive inside my Windows uh, directory, inside Windows uh, 32, in, sorry, inside System 32. All right, and we will find that that file is called uh, MS. HTA, all right, so it is an EXE file which we basically want to block. So what we want to do here is just set up straight out of the box a deny policy immediately and hopefully we can get that to work. Now the reality is that we really uh, need to do a few other steps before we can do that. 
So here we go, let's scroll down just a little bit further and we'll see MSHTA there. So what we wanna do is just block that file. We will move the slider back up one and you'll see it now. Uh, we'll block every version of it. We go next, there are no exemptions and we go and create. So you'll see now that uh, we have the deny rule. That's the only rule that we've got. So there's none in installer, none in scripts, and none in packaged apps. So the only thing we have is a deny for that one file that we are basically nominated. Now, if I go in and try and run the command prompt, for example, to go in and run that file, you'll see that app locker has actually blocked everything there, which is not what we want. Now, the reason that that happens is you can't have a single deny rule. We need to uh, have uh, the default rules in place first. So what we need to do before we do a deny rule is basically right mouse click and select the default rules. Now that's going to put in the allow rules. So basically it's going to firstly allow uh, all programs in program files to run also in the Windows folder. And then it will basically also allow administrators to run all files. So there'll be no limitations for uh, our administrator. So that we go in here, we right mouse click on this one as when, create the default rules, you'll see that it creates a simple uh, allow rule. So we have our allow rules and now we have our deny rules. Now with those in place, if we now go in and run the command prompt and uh, try and run MSHTA, you'll see that that is now blocked because the rule that we set up, the deny rule we set up, applied to everyone. So that's exactly what we want to do. So the takeaway here is to make sure that you have your allow rules in place before you do any denies. So with that set up, let us go and log in as the uh, local user. Okay, so let's sign out of this and see what experience it is for the local users. So what AppLocker has done, those policies, they have allowed the administrator to uh, run in the application and denied that MSHTA. But for a local user, they're only allowed to run programs that are in program files and also in the Windows directory. Anything else will be denied or be controlled by AppLocker. So if we now go in and have a look in that downloads directory again, let's go in there, have a look, and you'll see if I try and run PuTTY now, you'll notice because AppLocker is in place, we have those policies that are only allowing execution from the Windows directory. Uh, anything else is being blocked basically by AppLocker, and we will get that message uh, there to let us know. Now, if I go in and try and run the Firefox installer, basically the same result there. And of course, if I go to run my command prompt, uh, you'll see that I'll be able to get to my command prompt. And if I try and run that same program, again, that is uh, denied. So the idea again with AppLocker is that it is designed to create, help you create uh, policies that you can apply to a machine to determine where programs can and can't be run. Now, in most cases, you're going to want to set that to run from standard directories like program files and Windows, and you're going to want to deny from most other locations. So the default settings are basically are your best options to start with. And of course, you can go in and customize those further if you want. So my advice would be is just start with the default rules. They're going to be very general. They are going to serve the purpose for most people. And then you can go in and customize if you do have any other applications. So remember that in a standalone mode, we're going to need Windows 10 Enterprise. But if we're deploying the policies via uh, in tune, we can use this with Windows 10 Professional. And the first thing to do is make sure that we have the service running. Uh, and if we go into services, you'll see as noted that that is the application identity service. So we've made sure that is running. And then what you need to do is go in and use the local uh, security policy settings, go into the application uh, control policies, look at AppLocker, Firstly, make sure that in the properties there that they are configured and set to enforce. And then obviously go in and you can right mouse click on these and you would then add the default rules. You'll see the default rules are basically 
to allow programs to run from program files and from the Windows folder, as well as allow administrators to run uh, any program there. Now, if you want, you can then go in and create any deny rules to block specific files for any user in the environment. Now, this is going to be a really good way to protect machines from things like ransomware that can be downloaded and then execute. So it allows us to nominate the areas or the, the locations on the machine that uh, will permit execution uh, of files are very handy. Now, the other thing is it's not an absolute, it's part of a defense in depth strategy you wanna be taking to the security of your environment. But again, this is a very, very powerful one, especially if you take the defaults there and restrict what where local users can actually run uh, files from. So hopefully it's given you a bit of an idea of what AppLock is all about, how it works, the basics, how to set it up, on a standalone machine. And remember, in a standalone environment, we're going to need to be using Windows 10 Enterprise. But if we deploy the policies using things like Intune, we're going to be able to use this with Windows 10 Professional. So with that, thank you very much for watching the video.